this work is really important and we're trying to put it out there more in the world. So if you had an audience that you were talking to about what is this intersection between pre and perinatal psychology and midwifery, how would, how would you describe the importance of understanding these pre and perinatal principles with the kind of work that you do as a midwife? I think it has everything to do with midwifery. Um, we were all born and we all have a history of birth. And one of the most important things that I found with this work is that integrating my own early history has really helped me to be more present at birth and to respond to different situations rather than just to react to them. Um, also, I think that you know what I offer to the clients that I work with is that they can have two sessions with me and Ray during the pregnancy. And so we support them to have a deeper connection with each other, to work on whatever challenges are up in their relationship, and to integrate whatever challenges have um, been created in their life because of how they came into physical form and how they were born. And so I'm working with my second generation of babies right now. So babies I caught have grown up and they're coming to me to have their babies. And so by knowing the history of what the parents went through to have the first child with me, and then working with that child as an adult, and seeing where their challenges are with their own relationships and how that is so similar perhaps to what their parents went through is really amazing. And so with a deeper understanding of what's held, you know, two generations back, I get to support them to really differentiate the layers of what happened with grandparents, parents, and now what are they wanting for the birth of their baby. So Mary, I understand that for someone just hearing that, they might wonder, why do these ways that we come in, how do they make an imprint so that it would somehow interfere with our birth, interfere with our life? How does this happen? Well, it has a lot to do with sequencing because whenever we do any activity in our life, there's a sequence of what we have to do before an event, and then there's the beginning, middle, and end of the event and the integration phase. And any activity has those five um, parts to a sequence. So in any activity of writing a paper, choosing a job, going on a trip, um, we have to have an intention about where we want to go. We have to do preparation about how we're going to get there, make plane reservations, rent a car, whatever it is, get a boat. And then um, the beginning of our journey starts and there's a middle and an end and then when we come back home there's integration and in birth it's that same sequence applies so wherever in that sequence there's an interruption or an intervention it can leave an imprint so can you give a, us an example of, of what an imprint looks like and feels like what interruption in the sequence might be and how that might show up in the work that you do um, so, for example, if a child is um, induced at the beginning of their labor, um, they don't get to come to a place of knowing that it's time to go somewhere. They don't get to connect with the impulse of their own knowing that they want to, you know, do something to prepare for the journey of birth. So that part is skipped over. And so later in life, how that imprint can show up is that that child doesn't know how to really trust their own knowing around the impulse to begin something or to even hold their own intention because in the beginning that place was skipped over and say Pitocin was given to to begin their labor. So that would be an imprint that shows up later in their life. So if you've had these interventions, if you've had difficulty either prenatally or before, you know, or during birth, how do you handle it? How do you make repair? How do you recover from these kinds of difficulties? When we sit in sessions with families, we really um, listen to what they know about their birth. And a lot of times the story will push the pace of, of how they relate the story. So we'll work to slow the story down. 
and we'll give them whatever might have been missing in the beginning where perhaps they were didn't have the preparation that was necessary before the intervention happened or be, maybe there wasn't enough support um, maybe the pace went so fast that it was really hard to integrate the experience as they were going through it so they had to integrate it after the fact and so we'll sit with them in that story we may follow a body movement and a lot of times these little micro movements will hold the whole story of their birth and they actually know the birth inside of themselves and so we'll just watch for movements and perhaps follow a movement and they'll show us a whole birth pattern in the way they move. So if you are a person who has had a difficult birth or mom who's had a difficult birth what does how can someone find it? information or ways to heal because it is very compelling. Most of us know inside if there's been difficulty even if we don't really know the story. So what can you tell someone who's looking for healing or support? Yeah I think if they connect with the APA um, Association and um, there's a lot of people who do this work to support people to integrate their birth. There's a lot of practitioners around um, Ray Castellino has a, a huge uh, number of trainings and process workshops and private sessions. He does a lot of different types of this work. Um, Myrna Martin has a training in this work. Um, Regina Boucher and Klaus Kappeli in, in Switzerland are actually doing a training in this work. And they also do process workshops where you, they take small groups and, and each person gets to go deep and have a turn to explore what's there in their history. Can you tell us a little about the Baby Clinic that you're part of out in California? Yeah, the Beba Clinic is a place where families come to work on whatever the challenge is happening in their life currently. And almost always the challenge that's up either between mom and her partner or the parents and the child um, usually that has some connection that goes all the way back to the birth. And so we sit with them and listen to the story and give each person in the family a chance to say what the challenge is and, and what their feeling is and support them in how to come in connection with each other and how to sit in the place of struggle while being in connection. How to allow the difference of opinion to exist for everybody that's there and um, there's something very healing about that and we also really pay attention to the child and and look at what the story is that they're showing us through play through supported attachment um, in the way that they relate to the parents so one final question so if you could have a vision for what birth might be like, given all that you know, all those 39 years, all those births for American families today, what would you say? Well, I think one is to do your own work, to really look at integrating your early history, to pay attention to our pacing. I think that a lot of people in America go so fast that it keeps them in avoidance of what is just below the fast pace, which is the feeling of what, what lies there and what our history holds. Um, for mom and dad to be in connection and come together while being with their children so that the children Get to feel what it's like to sit in the presence of mom and dad in connection rather than handing off and lateralizing the care of the kids. Watching our children with curiosity and wonder to really look for what the story is that they're trying to tell us through their words, through their actions, and through their play. And for birth, Mary? I think just to know that birth matters, that there's so much influence on our lives from what, how birth occurs. 
and to really support birth to be as natural as it possibly can. And if there needs to be an intervention, that it can be completely life-saving and to know that there's ways to work with that and to integrate it more fully into our experience. For women to not try to figure out birth so much with their minds and their heads, but to really be in their bodies and to be in connection with their partner so that they're supported to really relax, open, and let their baby out.